So hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture in the DC to DC converter series and in the previous week we had edited the circuit parameters of the zeta converter. So in this lecture we will continue and start with the pulse width modulation for the converter switch. So as always before we start the lecture a quick background that in case you are interested in these kind of video lectures but you would like something a little more comprehensive that is a full length online course. I have several online courses available on the MOOC website Udemy. So one of the first ones is this course simulation of magnetics for power electronics using Python. This is the latest course and this course covers how we can simulate a, a transformer using Python. So this has several aspects. It starts with some basic theory of magnetics with inductors and coupled inductors and finally talks about multi winding transformers and eventually has a case study of a flyback converter in which I consider a high frequency transformer. So besides this, the older courses which I have are on basics of simulating power electronic circuits using Python, mainly Python power electronics and in this I talk about how you can install Python power electronics, a little bit of basic theory about power electronics and finally a case study of simulating a buck converter. And of course, the another course which I have which is more on control and signal processing is basics of digital signal processing for power engineers. And in this I talk about how you can design filters using Python and I have a case study of a low pass filter and a high pass filter or rather a band pass filter. So these are three courses which I have on the MOOC website Udemy. The links for these courses are available on the description of this video. So if you are interested in a more comprehensive course, please do check out the links. Otherwise I will continue with the lecture. So as I said, we had ended the previous lecture with editing the circuit parameters. Now before we continue, let's export them so that at least we have backed up our circuit parameters. So all I have to do is click on this export parameters button and if we go to our file browser, you'll see that this underscore params.csv file is there which contains the parameters of the Zeta converter. So let's keep going. So we can go down and go to the next page or the main page and we go to edit control. So here we are going to add a control file. So first we are going to start with basic pulse width modulation with a constant duty ratio. This is what we always do with all our converters and we'll do it for the Zeta converter as well. So let's go over to the file browser. There is no control file. So we will have to copy a control file from a previous simulation. So let's just go over to the previous simulation which is a SEPIC converter and control and pick up the gate signal.py file. So this contains the pulse width modulation. So now that we have this, let's go over to our editor, go to the Zeta converter and open the gate signal.py file. So you see this is the gate signal.py file where I have all these parameters, the switching frequency, I generate a carrier signal which is a sort of waveform and I perform pulse width modulation. Now as always, when completing a simulation, I do an open loop control where I modify the duty ratio from 0 to a particular value of 0.8. Now initially we won't be doing this. So let me comment this out and let me uncomment this previous line which sets a constant duty ratio or modulation signal, however you wish to say it. So this is now the control file. Now we want to add this control file to the simulation. So let's go to the browser and choose this file. So this is a Zeta converter, choose gate signal.py. Let's just write pulse width modulation, save the file. And we also have the descriptor file, right? The descriptor file contains all the control variables that are needed. So we can just go over and upload the descriptor file. So these are all the control variables. This is the advantage of using this method. You can quickly upload variables instead of actually adding them. So since we have done this much, we are now ready to run the simulation. So let's go back to the main page and let's go to the main view output. So to run the simulation, all you have to do is click on the run button and it says simulation is running. But as I said, always when you run a simulation, particularly when you have control, go to the command line and make sure there is no error. If there is an error in the control file, it will not appear in the browser, it will appear in the command line. 
So therefore, always check the command line to see if there is an error. There is no error, so that means the simulation is running. So let's verify our simulation with an initial plot. So as always, the best plot to view is the output voltage plot. Start the plot. And we have voltmeter VO, call this VO. Save the waveform and click on done. We just need one. So let's plot this. And let's go to the file browser and we have an output voltage. So this is our output voltage. Okay. There is a lot of harmonics. I mean, there is a lot of ripple. That's okay. But a voltage of around 5 volts, right? Now, as always, let's try to verify this. So let's go to our Excel sheet. Actually, it's not an Excel sheet, just a spreadsheet. And we are choosing an input voltage of 12 volts. We have a duty ratio of 0.3. In a Zeta converter, which is the same as a SEPIC converter and the Chuck converter, the output voltage is input voltage multiplied by the duty ratio divided by 1 minus duty ratio. So that means it is 12 into 0.3 divided by 1 minus 0.3. Multiply and you see it is 5.14. So if you go, we'll see, we see that it is indeed 5.14. It's a little difficult to see because we have a lot of ripple and we will talk about this very soon, why there is so much ripple. And we will also compare the three converters and see how they all behave. But what's important is that the simulation is running, is running correctly because we are getting a voltage, an output voltage very close to what we expect in the simulation result. So therefore, this simulation is correct, right? So with this, the next step is to analyze the performance of the inverter. That is, we will look at the inductor currents, the capacitor voltage, the capacitor currents, everything else, which is what we always do in all our simulations. But I would like to devote that for another lecture. So let me just delete this, save it as usual, and I will stop this lecture for now. As before, if you have any doubts, please do post in the comments or email me or message me on social media, whichever is your preference. Or I will see you in the next week where we will analyze the performance of the Zeta converter. That is, we will analyze the waveforms of the current through the inductors, the current through the capacitor and all the currents in all the branches and try to figure out how this converter works, right? And map it, of course, with respect to theory. So, as before, if you have any doubts, I'll be happy to hear from you. Otherwise, I will see you next week when we continue with this lecture series. Thank you so much and see you soon. Goodbye for now.